How's it going YouTube? It's Panda time. In this video we're taking a look at my Mastermon decklist. Uh, now Mastermon is pretty cool. Back in the day I always played a bunch of Mastermon and back then it was like people play Mastermon as a support Digimon while I always played her like as the main boss monster. Now with the new star deck things are different and everybody's playing Mastermon because she's pretty good obviously. There's a bunch of different builds out there and I will say is that I'm not 100% sure happy with my build. I'm still trying to tweak it. I'm still trying to find that right balance. Uh, there's a bunch of great builds out there, so definitely check out some other players. What I will say is that I, I don't like being super greedy with Mastamon. I don't like the idea of just being like a janky security control deck. I, I don't like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you see my choices. And uh, I definitely encourage you guys to experiment and try. See what you like. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. Alright, so for the babies, we have four Nyaramons and one Demimaramon. I think these are pretty standard. What I will say is that my build tends to be more yellow focused and originally I tried running yellow babies which I think was okay but ultimately it made it hard for me to play the dual color options uh, so I switched to the purple babies and I think that after testing this is the way to go. Uh, I guess the Mermon could be anything else but honestly good you want your babies to cycle because uh, the deck needs it. It's definitely slow to start and you need to see your pieces early on so the purple babies work fine. Uh, for the rookies, we play four of the Salomon and Lesu Jagras. Uh, you know, I think having this effect is really good. The Gatamon also shares this, but you won't always have the Gatamon, and being able to Jagras at the end of the turn is crucial. Salomon Digital is from purple, so it's fine. Really good. And then I play four Candlemons. Uh, same thing, you know, yellow rookie, you can Digital from purple. The Inheritable is really good, it makes your hard draw purples be cheaper. I specifically like this with the Ganomon. Having the Gato go from a 5 drop to a 4 drop I think is a big deal. So I'm a huge fan of the Ganomon. I definitely like it as a 4 of. Uh, now, I see a lot of lists that only have, you know, a very small rookie count. Uh, but that's just not how I like to play the game. I feel like I play a lot of rookies and I still break all the time. So I like a higher rookie count. Although this is still low by my standards. We play 2 Psychmon because Gabumon is cute. Uh, and Psychmon does a lot for the meta, right? Being able to block the Stingmon reduction, the Ankylo, the Akilomon is very relevant. Then I have one Gossimon. I think the memory blockers are not as relevant in this meta, uh, but essentially you'd like to just have the option that if you need it for a matchup it's there, especially because you could bring it back from the trash or the security with Mastermon, right? Uh, so that's it for the rookies. Now for the champions, uh, we obviously play for the Gatomon. There's basically no choice you have to this card, it's absolutely insane. Uh, what I will say is that I've learned from playing the deck is that the Gatomon gets clapped very easily, it's a champion, it's a 4k, it literally dies to everything. So oftentimes you are going to be hard dropping the Gatomon, but you need to be realistic on when you think it's going to actually survive. And sometimes having a rookie and then just digital and the Gato over it so you have the guaranteed play for next turn is the way to go. Like if you do this and they put you to 1, you can still digital on a 5 on the Gato and then hard drop a 5 to guarantee the Mastermon Joggers, right? So, what I will say is don't underestimate Digivolving on Rookie into the Gatomon. But Gatomon is insane, you can bring it back a couple ways and its search and its effect is crazy good. I played two of the, the Rush Gatomon. Uh, I like everything about this card, you know, it's five play calls, which is good, dual color, which is insane, has Rush, which is crazy good, Retaliation is super relevant as well, and 6k. Like, everything about this card is super good. It just goes so well with everything we're trying to do. And I think that we could be quite aggressive with Mastermon sometimes. So there's games where like for example I have two bodies, you can go like Chaos Lisa swing, it survives. You drag it into a Master, which can swing for two checks, Master Effect can bring up the Black Atomon, and then you can hybrid for game, right? So we can be very aggressive and the Black Atomon definitely helps with that. Uh, now my list is more heavy into the champions because again I, I don't know how people can play with only like six champions, I, I don't get that, but it is what it is, you know. I like playing champions. I play two Kasimon. We play yellow tamers, and I feel like we need Kasimon to close out games. It happens all the time. I know that most people don't play this, but I, I couldn't imagine it. it. It does so much for me. It's won me so many games. And sometimes, you know, if we need to use Digiball as a champion, it's fine. Uh, then we have my spicy text. So I play one Gatomon and one Leomon. So these are old cards that I've always liked. The Gatomon is supposed to work with the old Mastermon, but it also works with the new one, right? We don't really have blockers, but Gatomon can be a blocker. 
and also when you summon it, it can give you recovery. Uh, this is good because you could sometimes summon it off of like Flame Health side and get recovery and a blocker, which would definitely save you behind. And sometimes you could just like have a rookie digital integrado and like have a blocker for two. It might not be super relevant most of the time, but I like having the option to go into Gato, and I do like running more champions. Uh, now the Leon one is another cute tech. Basically, if he gets checked in security and you have four or less, he's going to recover you one, which is good. But the biggest thing about this deck is that we can actually guarantee this effect because Master One can put Leon one from security, or from trash into security. So you can go into Master, put this guy in security, and then summon something else, ensuring that you have a free heal in security. Uh, so it's like Tactical Retrain Security, except it's a Digimon effect, so it's not blocked by things like Aldemon, Delicate Plan, things like that. And oftentimes people don't expect it, it's nice, I'm a fan of it, Leomon is cool, this is my deck, we're playing it. Uh, now we obviously play a lot of level 5s, I play 4 of the new Lady Devi and 1 of the old Lady Devi. I think the new Lady Devi uh, is better in this deck. Although obviously the old Lady Devi is a very good card, right? But the new Lady Devi is better for a couple reasons. Uh, for one, it's 6 play cost, so oftentimes you're going to be hard dropping your 5 to Jogres, and you'd much rather spend 6 than 8 to do so. It also digivolves from yellow, which is better for me because we have yellow champions, so that's super relevant. And then the effect is super good, let's just trash a card to pick up our angels, uh, which we need, right? Oftentimes the effect whiffs, but... You need it because you need to search for your pieces, right? So it, it's a good card. Inheritable is pretty solid as well. It definitely comes up because we have so many yellow cards. We can definitely take advantage of Retaliation. Uh, now the old Lady Devi, you know, it's good. It's good with the Gatomon. Going into this for one feels pretty good. Get a bunch of cycle. Inheritable is good. 8k is good. But again, I'd rather just be hard dropping the 6. And we play Chaos Lucy as well, right? So like, I don't think I have room for more purple level 5s. Uh, now for the yellow ones, I played two of the Andrew ones and two of the Magna Andrew ones. Uh, you could say that we're a bit low on fives that are yellow, but we could recycle these, right? Like once you go into a master one, you can get another one out. Once in the trash, you can bring it back with Flame Hellside, and we could find them relatively easy because their deck does have a lot of surge from like the Gatum one and Lady Debbie. Uh, they're both really good. Like, heal is good, secure attack minus is good, the inheritable is really good for Andrew Woman, comes in super clutch. Uh, if I was gonna make a change, I'd maybe try and fit in a third, either or, but 4 has been working fine for me, although definitely been in cases where I don't have the level 5 that's yellow and it hurts, but it is what it is, for the most part it's fine. And then we play 2 Chaos Luce, I feel like 2 Chaos Luce is the right number, and you definitely need Chaos Luce, I mean he's the best thing to summon from Mastamon, the fact that he can actually clear level 6 and Tamers is huge. And then Master Effect can then clear level 5, right? So you pretty much need Chaos Luce. I wouldn't play it less than 2, and I think 3 is too many, so 2 is a good number for me. Uh, for level 6s, we obviously play 4 Mastamon. Although I've seen people play 3 Mastamon, but that just seems wrong to me. Like, we're a Mastamon deck. Mastamon is the best thing we can do, so why wouldn't we want to play max copies of it, right? Plus, like, you need it. Oftentimes you'd have the pieces, but if you don't have the Master, like, what are you going to do with level 5s? Nothing, right? Mastamon is very good. Pretty good effect. It's super cool. I like the Digimon I always have. Jogress is powerful, of course. Turn 10k is good. Effect is good, right? It's just Mastermon is good. It's why the deck is the Mastermon deck. Uh, for the other level 6, nothing too crazy. We play 2 Ofanimon. I like Ofanimon, you know, we have enough yellow and purple that we should pretty much always be getting both the effects. Heal and clear is really good, especially in those matches where we need to stay alive. You know, things like Armor Rush, sometimes Beldramon. On Deletion, you get some of the Gatomon. Maybe the Rush Gatomon, you can get back the other Gatomon if you need to heal as well. Uh, so I'm definitely a big fan of Vivanimon. Now I also, I do play one Sword Defeat. Uh, what I'll say is that I, I don't love Sword Defeat in this build, uh, but obviously it has great synergy with the Mastamon. I feel like all the times if you're just hoping that you hit Sword in Security, it's not the way that I like to play Digimon, just hoping for things like that. Uh, but it, it is good at the same time, right? Like obviously it's a strong card, so... It was tough for me to fit into the deck, but I wanted to make sure that I played at least one of it, so we are playing one. Uh, now we played two yellow memory boost. I definitely like the memory boost. You know, being able to pick up our cards is good. We have more yellow than purple, I would say. And having extra memory is really good, especially when things like Gatomon, where like, I was talking about how you play the Gatomon and it gets cleared. You could be at three, pop the memory, gives you five, play the Gatomon, do something with it right away, which is super relevant. I'm definitely a fan of memory boost in this format. We play 4 Flame Hellside because I think anything less is just wrong. 
Flame Hellside is such an amazing card, it's so insane, it lets us recycle level 5s, it's crazy in security, it's just way too good, right? Like, you just, you play 4, anything else is just has to be wrong. And then for the rest, we have one of options, we play one Reinforced and one Chaos Aggregation. Uh, Reinforced is a one-off, we can't play more anyway, but it works with the deck, healing is good, the extra memory is once again good. As for the Chaos, I again wanted to at least have one of it because the effect is good and sometimes it's the only thing that could save us. Uh, but most of the time I'd rather just be playing F Flame Hellside and getting Hellside security. Sure, this is better against like things that Hellside can't answer, but for the most part it's fine. Uh, it's a cool card, you know. One thing I'll say is that you can trash your opponent's top security and put their Digimon at the bottom to make sure that you don't deal with a Tamer. Like, let's say they have a 50,000 DP Digimon, right? You put it at the bottom of security, you know it's gonna be there, and when you're swinging, you're swinging for a game and it doesn't matter how much DP it has, right? But you'd rather take a chance at trashing like a Tamer or a Hammer Spark or an option, something that's gonna change the game, right? So that's how I like to think about this card. Uh, and then we have Triple Kari. Kari is our only Tamer. She works really well with everything that we do. You know, we obviously recover quite a bit. And Kari just enables some good plays. Plus, I do play Kasim on, so having multiple Kari's is nice. So, yeah, that is my Mastermon build. Uh, it's a bit different. You know, it's funny because it's really not as greedy as some of the other builds. Uh, but I hope you guys like it. I'm still not like a thousand percent sure that this is the way that I want to play Mastermon. But it's been working out okay for me so far. And I definitely wanted to share it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.